All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to uh, start by just pulling this all apart. I'll check all the hinge pins, bearings, just make sure nothing's worn out. I don't think anything's worn out on this car. It's in really good shape. It's just a little dirty, but that's what we're going to do. It's fun anyway to see what's cooking under there. Get it all put back together. What's this? Ooh, you scared? Should be. And um, we'll move to an overhead. I'll pipe in some narration. Be a lot easier that way maybe I do like a hyperlapse sort of thing so please stand by so let's get this teardown started i wanted to note that we'll get way more in depth into the triple x lineage for our b3 versus triple x shootout video later this year for this series i thought it would be fun to interject some personal knowledge of what it was like back in the day when this car hit the track well because i was actually racing back in the day when this car hit the track the mid to late 90s if I recall, it was the summer of 1999 when one of the fast guys first showed up to our local track with a XXX buggy. Up until that point, we had a pretty good mix of associated B2, B3, and low C XX buggies, and for the most part, they were all fairly evenly paced together. Being an associated guy, I was running a B3 buggy, and thanks to the help of some of the local racers, I had a pretty good setup in it, and it was pretty dialed into the track, or so I thought. But once that XXX buggy hit the dirt, it was instantly apparent this new chassis was a game changer. It seemed to do everything better. It jumped flatter, carried more corner speed, and had way more forward bite than anything else on our track at that time. It was so good, in fact, that many of the local racers had switched overnight to the Triple X, and I was one of them. I remember getting my new kit a few days later at my local hobby shop. Assembly went together well. I was pleasantly surprised with fit and finish of the kit, and I was more than happy not to have to build another associated style shock for once. I was also pretty stoked to see the front camber links in front of the shocks. This made adjustments to camber or roll center on the fly way easier than the B3. Perhaps the most pleasing thing of all to me was the kit setup right out of the box was dialed. Maybe it was a coincidence that the kit springs and settings were perfect for our local track conditions, or more than likely the low C team drivers did a little research to give us something usable right from the get-go. Pretty awesome. I recall gluing up some IFMAR rear pins, mounting up some low C red fronts, dropping this thing on the track, and I was dialed. I was way faster than the previous week with my B3 that I had spent most of that year setting up. Unfortunately for me, most of the other racers made the switch that weekend as well, and they were faster too. Good times, right? The version we have here on the bench is the XXX BK2. That's right, the man himself, Brian Kenwald edition. A few changes were made to the BK2 over the stock Gen 1 Triple X that I raced back in the day. Most notably, the rear gearbox was totally redesigned. Losi decided to lower the CG of the car by placing the rear differential lower overall on the chassis. The bottom T-plate mount actually had to be notched out to make this happen. This also created some rear roll center changes on the car. But whether or not this was a good move on their part is definitely questionable. I was talking to a few friends over at the Vintage Losi Facebook page, and they told me that, well, this took away a lot of the rear traction on it. In fact, the next generation of Triple X, the Triple X CR, Losi went back to the tried and true standard transmission, so there's definitely something to it. I've been thinking about this Triple X vs B3 video a lot lately, and because I know how good that Losi is over that B3, at least from what I remember, I think tons of setup changes are going to need to go into that B3 chassis to get it 100% dialed into the VBRC layout but I will definitely make sure it's as fair as possible. So there you have it. One perfectly good triple X buggy turned into a pile of parts right before your eyes. I found a few bad bearings and the rear diff case was actually cracked, so I'm gonna to have to replace that stuff. Other than that, I'm gonna go over the shocks, replace the ball cups, and this thing will be ready to go. So stay tuned for the reassembly video coming soon. And as always, if you like the content, please like and subscribe below. Thanks for watching.